Welcome. This is unit 13 of our MOOC and a logical continuation of our exploration of EcoDRR and EBA tools. In this session, we will be exploring special tools such as GIS and remote sensing. Here are our learning questions. First, how can special data, GIS and remote sensing be used for EcoDRR and EBA? Second, what are other useful applications of spatial data for EcoDRR and EBA? Spatial data refers to any geographically references data. It means that data are connected to a place on the Earth. GIS, which is short for Geographic Information Systems, is an information or computer system to input, retrieve, process, analyze and output multiple layers of spatial data. GIS is composed of hardware, software, data, and brainware or the user. Within GIS, different information layers can be overlaid as long as they have spatial reference. One of the most important uses of GIS and its capabilities for spatial analysis is to support decision making on land use planning. It can be a great tool for decisions about risk reduction and adaptation. Input data can range from cartographic maps to field data and satellite images. The most common outputs for GIS software are maps, statistics and tables, charts or databases. There are various GIS softwares and applications out there some of which are freely accessible. Let's look at an example and see how GIS has been supporting EcoDRR in a small municipality in the south of Haiti. The south of Haiti is frequently hit by storms, which cause storm surges and flooding. As you know by now, coastal ecosystems such as coral reefs, seagrass beds and mangrove can reduce the impact of storms and subsequent flooding. But like many areas of Haiti, the degradation of ecosystems has resulted in higher risk in this municipality. UNEP has been working with the community and the municipal government to protect the coastal ecosystems and reduce disaster risk since a large portion of the population relies directly on coastal systems for livelihood, the project aims to also reduce vulnerability through ecosystem protection. So, how did applications of GIS support this EcoDRR project? First, baseline data on demographics and geophysical data such as elevation, water depth, and type of shoreline were gathered to better understand the area. These maps were also complemented by information provided by the local community regarding historical records of storms and changes in ecosystems. Next, remote sensing was used to map the existing ecosystems. Remote sensing is the science of obtaining information about objects or areas from a distance, typically from aircraft or satellites. Remote sensing can be used to monitor ecosystems or land use. For example, satellite images can show changes in the extent of forests or wetlands over time. It can also be used to assess hazards and exposure, for example, to track hurricanes or model floods. A high-resolution satellite image of Port Salute was used to map the existing coastal ecosystems. The map was then verified through a field survey using GPS devices. The result was a map that shows what ecosystem can be found in the area and where they are located. The field survey also added information about the conditions of these ecosystems and found that most of the natural ecosystems are highly affected by human activities. This information was then applied in an open source GIS model develop developed by the Natural Capital Project. The Invest Coastal Vulnerability Model was used to determine what areas of the coastline are more likely to be affected by flooding and storm surges. Secondly, 
It maps where ecosystem services can reduce the impact of hazards. This model is unique because it includes the protective role of ecosystems in hazard assessments. The model was run multiple times with different scenarios, current ecosystem conditions, complete loss of ecosystems, and ecosystem conservation. As you can see, under current conditions, only some parts of the municipality are highly exposed to flooding and storm surges. If all ecosystems were completely lost, it is likely that the hazard impact will increase. With conservation and restoration of ecosystems, the hazard impact is significantly reduced. The outputs of the INVEST model were then overlaid with a map of population and key assets and are being used in decision making related to land use planning and conservation. In 2013, Port Salute was designated as one of Haiti's first marine protected areas and the results of the special analysis are being the basis in the development of a management plan for the protected area. When resources are limited and several objectives exist that cannot be met simultaneously, we speak of a decision problem. In such situations, we turn to special decision support system or multi-criteria special evaluations that help us to make judgments and analyze trade-offs. They assist stakeholders to understand where compromises can be found. For example, imagine that the government of our Green Island is proposing a number of measures to reduce disaster risk. A first step will be to determine which measures are the best based on a number of stakeholders. Determine criteria. The criteria could be economic, social, and ecological suitability of the measures as well as hazard mitigation benefits. Layers of data can then be overlaid in GIS to find the most optimal alternatives for risk reduction, which can, for instance, be mangrove restoration along the coastline or establishing protection forest on steep mountain slopes. Special tools are extremely promising for EcoDRR and EBA. As with many other tools that we will be exploring, we find that special tools have been used for collecting data and tracking ecosystem health on the one hand and on the other for assessing post-disaster damages. It is only recently that we are finding an interest in merging these two applications. For example, Special data are now being used on ecosystem services for disaster prevention or to improve land use planning and research on ECODRR and EBA. However, accurate data may be lacking from many parts of the world, which can be a limitation to applying special tools. But certain software, such as invest models, can be applied even in data-poor countries. And luckily, most countries are now investing in special data infrastructure. This concludes Unit 13. Stay tuned for more tools for ECODRR and EBA in the next unit.